Hello, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. It's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking Starfield. This is a big one to tackle. It's a game that's been in the works for many, many years from a game development studio many people love and some people have been turned off by in recent years. It's a completely new thing from them. It's not an Elder Scrolls or a Fallout sequel. It's an ambitious space exploration game with its own new worlds and lore. So after playing a review copy and spending many hours with this game, personal opinion up front here, I like Starfield. I don't know if I love it. It has a lot of flaws, and in some places doesn't quite hit the heights I was hoping it would, but real simply put, I've enjoyed my time in this game world. If you were hoping Bethesda would make an epic game that would feel nothing like what they've done in the past and be completely glitch free and change the world, well, then you might be a bit disappointed. But if you're the type of player that was just looking for the next Skyrim, the next Fallout, and just like embracing the Bethesda gameplay and vibe like a warm blanket, then I think you'll be satisfied. Starfield is a complicated one to talk about, and I do think everyone's gonna argue about it. It's gonna be a device. One. On the surface, it doesn't look very nice, it has weird NPCs, it does have bugs, and the space exploration isn't as endless and as cool as some were hoping. Like I said, it's flawed, but it's an entertaining Bethesda-style game with some charm, some great factions, beautiful music, deep side quests, weird stuff to discover, and some cool lore. It took a while, but for me, the good outweighed the bad. For you, I don't know. That's the point of this video. We're gonna try and work on that. Let me explain why and break down all the stuff you can expect in the game. And just so you know, this video you see here is as spoiler free as we could possibly do. You know, in the hundred hours or more you could spend in this game, we tried to keep most of the footage on screen here to within the first few hours, just because like there is a lot of good surprises and I think stuff worth seeing yourself for the first time. Uh, and this footage is captured on both Xbox Series X and PC. Uh, you'll be able to tell by the frame rate. We'll talk about that all later. So in the game, you start out, you create your character, you pick some defining backstory and traits and get going. You're a miner on some remote mining planet and you stumble upon something that quickly gets you whisked away, conscripted into a group called Constellation. They're like a group of space explorers, where in this world, the humans are all over the galaxy and all over planets and just kind of doing the things humans do in the future. Uh, Constellation is a small group still just focused on exploration and the vast mysteries of space. And there's a good main quest here with some good characters. Sure, they look a little awkward, but there's some good voice acting from some of the main companions and dealing with their personality quirks and life differences is fun. Some of them, especially early on, like Sam Co, have some good charm to them. Spend some time with them. While characters may look generic on the surface, some of them might surprise you. But the actual main quest itself is interesting. Like I said, while your character is not voiced, you still seem to have some agency and choice in how things go down. And there's a good mystery to unravel that, again, I won't spoil. For me personally, I actually just wasn't into the game for the first few hours though. It takes a while to get its hooks into you. The opening mission is a bit bland. You don't really get that wow moment. And the first city you visit while being really big and grand, felt a bit boring and weirdly dull. But as you work your way through the main quest line, which I suggest trying to focus on a bit, at least up until you get to the city of Neon, that's when the game really unfolds and you're more powerful, you've got a good ship, you're with a faction or so and learn more about these worlds and you're just kind of going nuts. And one of the main things of the game, like there's a lot of combat. As much as you are an explorer and you can talk your way out of some things, you're still gonna end up killing a lot of dudes. And thankfully, the shooting feels pretty good. Depending on your stats, sometimes enemies will be a little bullet spongy, but not as bad as you'd think. Guns are loud and punchy and aggressive. And the feedback when bullets or lasers hit enemies gives you a nice proper like thwack. Melee is meh, but you, you can embrace some stealth. Uh, it gets a bit stronger as you level it up. And I never found myself completely 100% stealthing a location. Things would always tend to fall apart for me, but it does seem to be a semi viable play style as long as you're adaptable. It's not overly RPG from numbers and stats and points and magic, uh, more from the gameplay approaches, which I'll get to. But skill tree wise, 
it's kept fairly simple as well, with you spending points in one of a few categories to access some benefits. And each of those have their own multiple tiers or levels that you can dump more points into to get more out of it. So to unlock the next tier, it's not about just dumping a point though. You need to complete like little objectives or like a checkbox challenge first. So like instead of Morrowind and Oblivion just jumping a ton of times to get better stamina, now you actually have like a checklist, like say shoot 20 bad guys to get better at pistols or carry 75% of your carrying weight for X amount of miles to get an available upgrade to upgrade your encumbrance, which holy crap, the game is pretty ruthless with that or maybe I'm just a hoarder. But these little objectives do get a little bit more complicated once you get further down the tree. I don't know if it was like necessarily needed, but that to me is a minor nitpick. Otherwise it works and I like it. Uh, back to combat though, what sold it for me was the weapon variety. There's a good amount, uh, all with their own use cases and manufacturers from uh, kind of standard to super futuristic and even some surprises. There, there's a lot of good satisfying choices. Then they also bring over the weapon mod crafting system from Fallout 4 with some tweaks, which I thought was a great system there and also very cool here. It makes for a pretty staggering amount of options and things to hunt for and craft and work towards. And you're getting weapons, spacesuits, out of space clothing, and lots of resources for your journey. And uh, yeah, you can like sneak into someone's apartment or a shop and steal stuff just like any other Bethesda game, but you're usually getting the best stuff by exploring. And exploring is complicated. Unfortunately, it's a bit too weird for my liking. Too many hangups. There are a lot of cool planets and big cities and some towns, there are also a bunch of randomly generated planets. Now, Bethesda was upfront about this. They set expectations about how they were randomly generated and how it works, but I still just, it doesn't feel quite right. So exploration itself is a lot of loading screens and menus. You, you can look at a big map, warp to a new sector and float around and look at a planet, maybe talk to another pedestrian ship, do a few things, then you look at the planet with your scanner, and then you can see everywhere you can really land or really what the planet has to offer. Then you click on that, and then a loading screen, and then you're landed. Then you have to click leave ship when you're landed, and then it loads you out there briefly. You don't just hop off. So do you see, there's like a lot of barriers. The presentation, the boringness of just clicking around on a map or a scanner, all really hurts the experience. It's not as smart as it comes off initially. You know, presenting you with fuel consumption and a, a bunch of numbers to seem sciency. You're really just clicking on stuff, and it's a bummer. Same goes for actually scanning stuff on the planet's surface. Not the greatest thing from a fun standpoint, but uh, yeah, speaking of planet surfaces, uh, from that whole planet to landing sequence I mentioned, once you're out there, if you're on a randomly generated planet, you roam around what is a, typically a pretty ugly biome, slowly sprinting and running out of stamina, jet boosting around and checking out abandoned factories or caves that typically have a door to click on and load into what is like a typical Bethesda dungeon. And from there, you can usually blast your way through and uh, get some decent loot. It doesn't always amount to too much, and it doesn't usually have anything complex, but it does mean it feels like you can kind of endlessly space dungeon run. It may not be of the highest quality, and you may see some stuff repeat. Every so often, I found myself landing on a planet and seeing something cool and walking towards it and finding something totally weird. But most of the time, to me, it felt a little dull and I preferred focusing on like the towns and the quests and activities because the more you get into those, the better it gets. And holy shit, they give you a lot. Like from expeditions where you're just looking for stuff to getting into some messes with the faction quests and their own individual activities within to random long running quests you'll get from like a shop or some guy to job postings, there's a staggering amount of stuff to do in this game. Oh, and even piracy, which does remind me I should mention the ship stuff. So when you're in orbit, you can engage with other ships, like chat with them or get into combat. Combat is fairly simple, but pretty good. It gets the job done. You can actually kind of do vats from Fallout, like get a good lock on the ship and it zooms into them in slow motion and then you can choose to target, say, their shield generator first, 
uh, and then go for their engines with a different weapon, something like that. How capable your ship actually is, though, depends on how you build it. And then you can cycle power to engines to speed up, maybe disperse a bit of power to weapons to have more power behind them, or put it all towards your grav drive so that you can like light speed warp jump out of there quicker. The flying around isn't super complicated. Again, like you're just in kind of a big space arena separated by loading screens, which sucks, but hey, it's fun to blow up other ships. Still for me, I gotta emphasize the bigger thrills were on the ground. I had a lot of fun tackling missions and quests in different ways and stumbling through and making dumb choices and seeing the game react. Like sometimes I felt really slick and smooth, other times the complete opposite of what I expected to happen happened, uh, and sometimes I just went rash and went in guns blazing, and all of it was entertaining and sometimes surprisingly hilarious. Now uh, speaking of hilarious, I guess it's worth mentioning the buggy nature of the game. No, Starfield is not immune from the typical Bethesda stuff you've seen in their other games. I mean, it feels like a Bethesda game you've seen before, from gameplay to just like the feel, the, the vibe of it all. But that also boils down to weird, silly, buggy things that'll happen in the game. Like I'll walk into my ship and see a crewmate hovering two feet above the ground or clipping through a kitchen table. Now, during a conversation with an NPC, another character will walk into frame and the camera will wig out as they clip through them and do something funny. People will disappear in a blink. Like, if you've seen it in a previous game of theirs, you might see it here. Now, you might not see it as much, like, as often, but that goofiness is still there. Does it break the game? No. I haven't really had any uh, catastrophic issues other than getting stuck on a chair and having to reload my save, but it can break immersion a bit. It's not a disaster, but you'll see some weird stuff occasionally. It's, it's worth, some people are more sensitive to this stuff, so it's always worth bringing up. All that stuff does, however, contribute to making the game feel a bit old in spots. Some towns are like rich with detail and have a surprisingly dense amount of NPCs on screen, but other areas like the planet terrain or even some sections of say New Atlantis just look flat and drab and weird, especially at a lot of times of day. And that's on PC and Xbox versions of the game. It's just not the cleanest or newest looking game. And it's a shame considering the massive scope of everything. The town density, like I said, is great oftentimes. And when you're in space, the planets and the effects and the asteroids look pretty great. Or say if you're on a moon looking up at like Saturn and it's casting a light, that stuff is awesome but the rest of it really leaves a lot to be desired. And as you probably know, frame rate is 30 frames per second on console. And uh, in our experience, for the most part, it was a very solid 30. On the PC side, of course, everybody's machine is different and who knows how it'll be at launch. We've already had some patches and some updates and stuff like that, but we haven't had many issues after messing around with some of the settings, you know, not the biggest amount of options there, but we've been able to play it fine on our end. Now, switching back to another positive note, I did allude to all the stuff the game lets you do, like weapon mod crafting, but also researching to make special crafting components, as well as uh, cooking recipes, suit mods, which acts kind of like the weapon mod system. You can also build outposts on planets, kind of like Fallout, and uh, set that up to generate resources. And yeah, it can all be a lot, but the best thing I found myself spending time and money on was the ship building. To me, it absolutely delivers. Building is easy to grasp and fun to slowly get more and more crazy with it. You know, parts snap together. The game very clearly and intelligently shows you what can and cannot work, and you're doing it all in real time. There's a lot of options too, like small ships, space trucks for hauling, a bigger battleship, and I just loved adding onto my ship and then seeing it on the landing pad in real time and going, whoa, and then going in the ship and seeing how the interior changed. Like it's all satisfying and addictive. I got hooked on this like I did building settlements in Fallout 4 and it just improved the whole experience. Even if I was dissatisfied with a lot of the space exploration, seeing the ship I made in action, landing on planets, docked at a city, it was cool as hell, and I found myself saving up for a new engine or a new type of weapon to mount on it all the time. 
these were the main points we wanted to hit today, really. Uh, there's a lot of game here, and despite spending a lot of time with it, we haven't seen every inch of it. There's both stuff we couldn't spoil here, and also just a lot of secrets to uncover, stuff that we haven't even come across yet. Starfield is a flawed game with some aspects that just don't quite reach the heights they should, but it has plenty of merits. And the more time you put into it, the more it shows you its, uh, you know, flavors. We're probably gonna be talking about this one for a while. It is a Bethesda game I was expecting, really, even more so than I thought. If you like Bethesda games, even with this one's significant shortcomings, you might like this one. Now, it didn't do everything I wanted it to do, but like, I like the characters, the world, the civilizations, cool science and guns and ships. And as much as I have my complaints, I'm looking forward to continue playing it, and I pretty much recommend it. Obviously, depending on the type of player you are and your expectations for this game. Hopefully, I laid it out enough for you so you get where I'm coming from. This is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now, right? I give you some pros, some cons and some personal opinion and now I want to hear yours. What do you think about Starfield? Just let us know. Are you someone who's jumping into like that early access where you pay more for the game? Are you waiting for it to come to Game Pass? And also let us know if you're planning to play on PC or Steam. Are you going to be making mods for the game? Are you just skipping the game? Whoever you are, let's talk Starfield down in the comments. There's a lot to talk about with this one and like I said, stuff we can't spoil and stuff we haven't even found yet. So let us know in the comments. Try and keep it spoiler free but if this video helped you out at all, informed you, maybe just seeing the gameplay was nice, anything like that, clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. But I always make it a point to say this with the big before you buy videos. Uh, thank you for watching. If you've been sticking with us for so long, I put out the first before you buy video like eight years ago at this point with Batman Arkham Knight and we're still here today just kind of yapping about games. So thank you. You guys know where to find me on social media, but if you're new to Game Ranks, be sure to click, follow, do all the YouTube stuff. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Can I help?